is this the best budget macro lens you can get? Today I'm out doing some macro photography and finding out what makes the Takina 100mm 2.8 so good. If you've seen any of my other macro videos, particularly the most recent ones, you'll know that most of the time I use the Sigma 105mm macro lens, and that's really good, but the main reason I use that is because it autofocuses with the FTZ adapter on the Z7 body. For a long time, I used the Takina 100mm 2.8 ATX Pro lens, but unfortunately that doesn't autofocus with the FTZ adapter. But there are still many, many reasons why this is a fantastically good lens. I've come out to a local area today, I want to capture some macro photography with it, and I'm going to explain why I think this is still the best budget macro lens you can get. So this lens feels really solid, really rugged, you're not going to damage it anytime soon, it's made of a mixture of metal and plastic, and it weighs about 500 gram. it's pretty compact for a 100mm lens, I've got the FTZ adapter on there, but the actual lens itself is only that long, so that's pretty good. It's got an aperture range between 2.8 and 32, and it will do 1 to 1 macro ratio, so that means that you will get your subject at actual life size on your sensor, but it won't do that at all apertures, so bear that in mind. The front element is quite recessed from the end of the lens, I don't know if you can see it, it's right back inside there. I do have a lens hood for this, but to be honest, if you're worried about damaging the front element, you don't really need the lens hood for that. If you're trying to stop flare and glare, that's usually not an issue either, but you might need it for extreme circumstances. So like I said, this won't manually focus with the FTZ adapter on the Z bodies. It also won't autofocus on some of the more budget DSLRs, but most F-mount cameras I know that it does autofocus, and if you're using a different camera or brand, then I would just say double check online to see if it will autofocus on your body. If you're happy with the manual focusing system, then you don't need to worry about that, and all you need to do is use this push-pull mechanism here, and once you've pulled that back, it allows you to rotate the focus ring and get focus on your subject. I've been using focus peaking on the back of my camera so that will highlight all the areas that are in focus. That's helping out and also I've got the magnification button so I can zoom in and double check that I've got a really tight focus. I can't use focus shift shooting with the manual focusing lens and I won't go into detail what that is but I'll put a link up top to a video where I've explained it. But it's not too much of a problem, I'm just manually adjusting small steps with my focus and then later on I will stack those images together to get more depth of field. What I can say is that when I use this on my D500 the autofocusing is really accurate and it's fairly quick. Once you get down to macro scales it does get a little bit slower say compared to my Sigma 105mm but it's still acceptable. You've got a focus limiter switch on the side which will basically let you limit your focal range in three different ways. You've got full which will give you from infinity to one to one macro ratio you can set that now to limit and you've got 1 to 1 macro ratio back down to 1 to 2 macro ratio. Now if I just pull that back in, now if I set the limiter switch, I've now got infinity to 1 to 2 macro ratio. And the minimum focusing distance of this lens is 0.3 meters.
All right, so I've got a few images I can use now. I'm gonna head home, we'll have a look at the quality of those, and I'll also talk about any negatives that this lens might have. I'll see you back there. It can be difficult to find good macro subjects during winter, but hopefully those few shots give you some idea of the kind of quality you can expect from the Tokina 100mm 2.8 lens. I did also want to show what the quality was like across a range of different f-stops, so I've got another series of images to show you and we'll take a look at those now. So these images are obviously not macro, but there is no way I can get down to f2.8 if I was shooting really close at macro ratios. I've taken all of these at ISO 125, and this is the shot at f2.8. If we zoom in on the tree here, we see we do have some softness. Looks fine from here, but as we look closer, when we crop in, we do have softness. There isn't massive amounts of change when we get to the edges of the image. It's still soft, but I wouldn't say it's much softer. We do have some chromatic aberration. You see we've got some blue fringing around these flowers and there's some green fringing here around the branches. We can get rid of that fairly easily if we just come down to lens corrections, make sure we're on manual here at the top and then we can just use the eyedropper tool to hover over that green colour, select that and that will disappear and we can do the same for the purpley blue colour up here, like that, and that's all gone now. Let's move on, if we look at the f3.2 shot, fairly similar, looks fine from a distance. If we're getting close, we've still got some softness, not quite as much as the f2.8 version. And again, similar at the edges, once we get really close to the edge, probably is just a little bit more softer. Generally pretty consistent across the whole frame. This is the F4 shot. Starting to get a little bit sharper now. Still a little bit of chromatic aberration. Probably less than before though. And we'll move on again. This is f5.6, so this is where things really start to tighten up. If we look now, we've got a lot more sharpness. And again, a little drop off at the edges, but not bad really. Pretty consistent across the frame, I think. Moving on, f8. Really nice and sharp now. And we've got less fringing I would say around the flowers up here. Let's take a look at f11. It's getting really crisp now. It is one of the benefits of this lens, it is really sharp once you get to the right apertures. Let's move on to f16. It's not bad but I think we're starting to lose a little bit of sharpness now. So that will be because of diffraction. And if we have a look at f22, again, getting softer. Still consistent to the edges of the frame, I think, but overall softer. And then f32, we're really suffering now from diffraction, and that's looking fairly soft. So I would definitely recommend using this lens between f5.6 and f11 if possible. That's really where you're going to see most of the sharpness. So are there any downsides to the Tokina 100mm macro lens? Well aside from the obvious that it doesn't autofocus on some cameras, there's not a lot to complain about with this lens. It does suffer from some chromatic aberration issues, but you can get rid of those in Lightroom and Photoshop, so it's not a massive problem for me. And it also doesn't have vibration reduction. But again, not a massive problem. A lot of modern cameras have in-body stabilization, the Z7 does. Or you can raise your ISO, work on a tripod, use lights. All those kind of things will get around the problems of not having vibration reduction. 
So I think for the money, this is definitely the best budget macro lens that you can get. You can pick these up used in the UK for about £200, and I think that's an absolute bargain. If you do really need the autofocus, I would recommend something like the Sigma 105mm. I've got plenty of videos of me using this, and I'll put a link up top to one now. You've got just as much image quality as you have with the Tekina, but you've got that autofocus as well. It's a bit more expensive, but you get what you pay for. So that's about it for this video. Huge thank you for watching. If you've liked the video or found it useful in any way, please just give me a thumbs up down below. If you watch every week, I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. But if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed, you can just click down there on the subscribe button or over here on this picture of me. That way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. Until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.